Understanding the Hebraic roots and the cultural context of the scriptures is a fascinating study and the specialty of Joe Amaral, producer of the popular program First Century Foundations, seen on CTS. Well, in the first two weeks of April, Joe is going to be our featured guest for Celebrating Hope. God's Feasts revealed our spring membership drive. Joe is a favorite Truth To Go teacher here. We've heard some of his story, but we've never included his mother in the telling of it. We are thrilled to have Maria Amaral joining us today. Maria, you look like you could be a sister. Thank so you. So young <laughs> and vital. It's God's, God's mercy. And you are one of seven Marias, all sisters. Or eight. Oh, you are the eighth, one of the eight altogether. Yes. <gasps> What My mother adds, had eight girls. Eight girls. Now, why, why would she call them all Maria? Uh, it's a Catholic thing, you know. Maria Adelina, Maria José, Maria dos Anjos, Maria do Céu. <laughs> Mary, Mary, <coughs> on and on it goes. <laughs> so how would you know you were being called for supper? Well, my mom always remember our names. But how would you know that you were the right Maria? Because she called uh, Maria José. Oh, she do the hyphenated. So yes. we had, it's two names. Maria Adelina, Maria Dos Anjos, which is Maria Angie. Ah. Maria Jose, Maria. That's you? Yeah. Jo Jose. Yeah. And Maria. you would get Mary Jo. Yes. Right? Yeah, people call me Mary Even when jo. you explain the names, it's still confusing, Mara. <laughs> it sounds beautiful, though, doesn't it? Sure. And to add to the, just to, trying to wrap your head around this, in, in one house growing up, this became how you lived when you came from the Azores to Canada. Uh, your sisters came one by one? Yes. As they could afford the flight? Uh, and well, they all lived with you? We all lived in the same, same house. <laughs> with the husbands and the children. How many? We all had, oh my goodness. I had three kids, my other sister had two, my other one had two, the other one has four. Joe, I think you counted. I think there was at least 11 kids. The and Marias and their husbands, and the grandparents. Yeah. The grandparents, your, your parents. My parents. And Joe, you say, and a crazy cat. Yeah, th this cat definitely wasn't all there. <laughs> we called her Cookie. Cookie. <laughs> and uh, she was just a little crazy. You I know, wonder well, why. Well, she all fit the personality kids. of the home. You know, they say our pets take on the energy level of our house. We had a pretty energetic house with all those crazy Portuguese cousins, trust me. And this wasn't unusual. Uh, it, it's still not unusual uh, for families wanting a better life to come oh, yeah. and just pool yes. together. Yes. Yeah, first generation immigrants. Remember, Mom, we first went to, to Markham, that little house, then we went to Sterling. But it's like they, you see in the movies, this, you go from house to house, and everybody stays together. And when one gets their wings and can fly, they have enough money, then they go. Then you, you gain their room. You get a little uh, more space in the house, yes, remember? Yes. <laughs> Until eventually everybody gets on their own two feet, and it's a really wonderful system. And you'd have to have some house rules to make that work with yes. all those people. I had one room, one kitchen, and that was me, my husband. I had two children at that time, my father-in-law and my brother-in-law. How you fit? How you fit all that in one room and a kitchen? Me and my husband. And my two kids were in the bedroom. And my father-in-law and my brother-in-law, we had a sofa in the kitchen that it opens, mm -hmm. and they slept there. There it must have great. been moments of tension. It, it was great. It was great. Who did the cooking? I did. For all, for everybody? Did the other Marias help? No, no, for my family. Oh, you we, for Each your one own. did for us. Growing up, the Canadian military could drop by any time and there would be enough food for the army. Really? <laughs> that, that's the Portuguese way. And so, it would be good food, too. Really good food. Oh, we had some last boy. night. <laughs> <laughs> I want to extend sincere sympathy to you, Maria, in the passing of your husband. Joe was with us recording. Mm -hmm. uh, truth to go. Yeah. Um, Dad actually passed away during one of the feasts, Joe. The greatest feast. We were actually looking it up on the calendar. We went back to October uh, 22nd, 2008, and it was actually the last and greatest day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the day that commemorates the humanity and God dwelling in eternity. And on that day, that's when 
my dad went to dwell with God in the greatest tabernacle. So it was very ironic because of the teaching that God has given us in our ministry about teaching on the feast, yes. but appropriate at the same time. All coming up, all coming up. Mm -hmm. We know you as um, uh, someone who brings much wisdom and insight and you must be a very proud mother today. I am. Maria. I am. But there was another day. Uh, <laughs> Joe was just two when you came over to Canada and uh, you lived at one point at least in a very violent part of the city of Toronto. Yeah, yeah. I remember growing up on Sterling Mom across the street from, from the junkyard. And uh, I mean, looking back now, I think, oh God, I would never want to raise my kids there. But I thought it was the best. I mean, every <laughs> week they kept bringing cars. I kept getting to break the windows and slash the tires and not get chased by the police. It was fantastic, you know? Were, were you allowed to go in there and smash up those cars? Uh, I'm on TV, I can't lie, right? That's true. I don't know if we were allowed, but we just didn't, didn't get caught. You didn't get caught. They were just using the parts, but... Yeah, so I mean, it wasn't the ideal place to bring up children, but we know we didn't know any better. And you know, there was uh, there was prostitutes and drug dealers and and pimps and and gang members all around. In fact, you say most of your friends were in gangs. Oh, a lot of my friends. You weren't in a gang. No, I was never in a gang, um, but I was good as in a gang, meaning I knew the guy, so I was protected. I could go anywhere. I could cross this line and not worry about this rival gang because we all went to school together. Mm. Did you know? you know this was going on, Maria? Right there. You were too busy working. And you did, like you're saying, your, your dad and, and all those men, you, you didn't really have relationships with them because they were just trying to eke out an existence for their families. To give us more than they had. And everything I have is because my mom and my dad, you know, left their, their country of origin uh, to come here to give me a better life. And everything I have is because of their sacrifice. and. I, I don't forget that, and that's why I'm really, really honored that my dear old mom could be here today. Don't you even say that word, old. My dear Look mom. Look at her. My dear mom. Your beautiful mother. Wow, attack the guest. Okay. <laughs> now, Maria, you were uh, religious people. Well, yeah, I was Catholic. Uh -huh. um, I was never too, too much into it. I didn't, no. I didn't, I wasn't. But that's what my parents taught me, and that's all I knew. And um, there was a time in my life when I came here, well, let me go back. When I decided to come to Canada, it was to avoid Joe to go to the army because at that time it was the, the war in Angola, Mozambique, and Joe was growing. I was so afraid. He'd be conscripted. Mm -hmm. He would be called mm -hmm. to go in because all men are. And at the same time, I wanted to, to be rich. <laughs> and, and Canada sounded so... Land of plenty. Yeah, you <laughs> get it from the trees, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when I got here, it was different. And I got sick, and I decided to go back to church and start looking for answers to the point that I said, you know, kneel down there and I go, God, if you're real, in that little box that is said that you're real there as, in, as you are in heaven, please come out and heal me or kill me, do something. You were really sick? I was really, really sick. I had an M MS disease. Mm. The doctors had um, advice. My family at that time, I didn't speak English good. I still don't, but better than was at that time. They said, tell your sister not to have another baby because she cannot hold it. She might drop the baby. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was in physiotherapy every day and I was doing uh, healthy foods, see if, if I would get better. get better, but it wasn't. It got worse and worse to the point that I want to die. I want to die. So you told God, heal me or, or, or kill, kill me. me? Yes, because I couldn't live that way. Mm -hmm. I couldn't take care of my children. I can, you know, I would put them in a bathtub, and if it wasn't for my husband, I think they would stay there. They or, would drown. No, you I mean, you couldn't get I them out. My, I, I had no strength no to strength. pull them up. I couldn't. 
I remember one day I made soup and I didn't even put potatoes because Portuguese soup, it has to have potatoes. <laughs> I didn't put it because I couldn't peel them and oh. cut them. I could have gone downstairs and asked my mom, but I knew she was busy, my sisters were busy. I said, oh, we can do it without it. Anyway. So how did God respond to your challenge? Nothing. There was no answer. There was no answer. He's not there in that box. I found that out. What is the box? Well, the, the church has, has, they have like a little box with oh. something in there yeah. that they call mm -hmm. the Holy Eucharist. I don't mm -hmm. want to be critical. That's what I was taught, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that he is real there as it in heaven. And on my innocence, on my needs, I kneel and I go, talk to me, do something. If you are real in heaven, here, as if you are in heaven, who are you? Come out and do something. So there was no answer. I was really disappointed. Anyway, one day my sister called me from work and she said, there is a place where you can go. This guy prays for people and they get healed.